This week on the 77% Street Debate. The question of LGBTI rights in this country has never been a question because there is the penal code that states we are not supposed to exist freely. Usually when it comes to homophobia, the first thing they'll be like, oh snap, you gay? Like, so you so you do what? You to you to like, like what that? happens to you? Very to sexualized. Do yes. Yeah. We who are in politics would rather live the way we used to live those days where no one talks about you know these things the end goal is give us our rights when we feel safe you will not hear anything about us Hello and welcome back to the 77% Street Debate. And today we're going to be discussing the rights or lack thereof of the LGBTQI community here in the country. Out of 64 countries that have outlawed homosexuality or same-sex acts in their countries, nearly half of those are right here in Africa. Kenya is of course one of those nations. In spite of these legal barriers, the queer community is still trying to challenge the society to create more space, more access and more visibility. And our question today is, is it possible to coexist without discrimination? And I'd like to ask my first question to Po. Now they are a co-founder of GALC, the Gay and Lesbian Coalition of Kenya, but also a lawyer. So I think with both of those hats, you can sort of paint a picture for us of what the situation is like for the community here in Kenya. So the law criminalizes some sexual acts yeah. and very generally and then the law also criminalizes the ways in which that act is performed among its different communities so same-sex relationships and same-sex sexual acts but also within straight couples masturbation oral sex so it's anything that's considered unnatural going against the order of nature as it's written yes. uh, so just to clarify what is illegal what is criminal what can you go to jail for what you can go to jail for is for being found having the sexual act what you can go to jail for is being perceived as having had those acts. Yeah. So a lot of policemen will arrest you, detain you for being perceived LGBTI or being perceived of having a variating sexual orientation or gender identity or expressing it in a way that is not heterosexual. Okay. But that in the law is not criminalized. So the simple fact of being queer is you're not going to go to jail for that. But Mary Lee's, you know, we're speaking here in terms of the legal framework, all these big words. What does it actually mean to be queer in Kenya? How does that life look like? Um, first and foremost, it means being human. And I think the, the most frustrating thing about the whole concept is that human beings are founded on differences. We are all different. I mean, look at you, Edith, look at me. We give, me are... give me specific examples. I came out to my family in 2017. Coming out to my family, I got disowned. And I wouldn't say family per se, I came out to my mother. My mother outed me to all my siblings and then consequently all of them disowned me, right? And uh, it has been five years now, I do not have a family. But also that is what catapults us to a lot of issues that a human being will deal with. Because if your family disowned you today, you lose stability. And while the general public likes to look at queer people and sexualize the whole existence of, of these people, these are people going through same problems that everyone goes through when they go through these circumstances. Let me hear from the people at the back. I want to introduce you for a second. Does anybody want to share their experiences, either being an ally, being queer, any specifics that they've had to encounter, go through? You look like you want to say something. <laughs> I'd say one of the biggest struggles ends up being um, the loss of social connections. Right, You grow up uh, inside of communities, plenty of communities, whether that's your family, whether that's your church, whether that's your classmates, your schoolmates. And at some point, as one becomes inside of their queer journey, you end up losing a lot of these connections. Um, but what I found an important journey in my life has been to seek and search for community and to build it. Let me bring in Karyuki Ngunjiri. He's a policy analyst with the leading party here in Kenya. And so I think you can speak on the party position, but also the question of when the law says that, you know, sexual acts are criminalized and yet you don't get access because of how you present, which law then is supposed to protect you against that discrimination? The beginning of the foundation of this whole discussion, according to the president who is the leader of this country, is based on the African values, norms, cultures and traditions. And of course, largely because uh, our community or our society here in Kenya has you know, <clears throat> those uh, issues that they consider as a taboo. But the other day, the Supreme Court of Kenya was uh, there to ratify 
this issue about uh, uh, LGBTQ. Yeah, uh, just for the benefit of our viewers who are not Kenyan, uh, in 2019, the High Court of this country ruled to keep in place the law that now criminalizes homosexuality. But in February of this year, the Supreme Court, which is a higher court, said that it is illegal to uh, prevent these communities from creating uh, foundations and societies that can fight for their rights. This is what you're referring to. Yes. So what our Christian values and morals have uh, brought to the fore is to open up a conversation on whether the legitimate rights of every Kenyan or every human being to be whatever they wish to be compromises the future of this country and the yeah. generation. And because you've introduced a church, let me introduce uh, Pastor Jem. She's from Mavuno Church. It's a very sort of, I would say, liberal church here in Kenya. Very hip, very young. Uh, and you have a very interesting viewpoint. Talk to me about this. So what I see in the Bible is that um, God had design and context for sexuality. There was uh, the whole concept of marriage is between a man and a woman, and it's within the confines of marriage. And for, the reasoning behind that is because there's, there's fruitfulness that comes with it. There's, there's a way that men and women are built differently. And so together we become better. We're able to thrive as, as a society. And so I feel like the position is that uh, this is a sin. And sin just basically means that it's an abuse of what you are created to do. Yeah. But then that doesn't give me the right to shun you. But of course, not everybody in this country believes that 80% of the people in this country identify as Christian, and most of them are very conservative, going as far as saying that not only is this a natural, uh, some people calling for violent acts against uh, the queer community. What do you say to them? It's hard to regulate what people think, but if you call yourself a Christian, then the standard is the Bible. And that Bible doesn't allow me to be violent against another person. Thank you. I want to hear some reactions from the back. Let me hear from... Mwangi, your response to that, uh, the church welcoming everybody, what's your view on that? I don't think it's wrong eh? uh, because they are also our children, they are also our brothers and sisters. But the problem uh, when we are being welcomed to the church eh, as a, that community, come uh, well dressed to the, as the church, the customs, the traditions of the church, be presentable like they do want to be. Eh? Don't come uh, identifying yourself um, um, this community also in that church. So, so can you give me an example of what would be inappropriate? Uh, inappropriate, eh? uh, I would think, eh? uh, coming with your, the colors eh? to the church. Eh? The rainbow? Yes. Oh. I, would not, uh, I would not like it to be... I, I really want somebody to get Paul's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> Paul, let me get your reaction because uh, you, you were literally holding your knees in disbelief. Come and tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what your thoughts are. It's always so fascinating when people start prescribing what you can and cannot do. Yeah. Mostly because all of us get to a stage where you start expressing yourself based on who you are, based on what you like. But isn't it fair to say that if you're coming to, you know, we're speaking here about church, but it could be a mosque, it could be a temple, that you just align with those values of the church, the temple, the mosque? So I really like to give integrity to institutions when they offer me integrity. And the thing about queerness and the rainbow, whether you wear it or not, for me is a non-issue. But what I'm willing to hear is what feeds your irrational fear or hatred for the rainbow itself, because that's just uh, colors put together that appear so naturally and people have claimed it yes but so many other collectives have claimed the rainbow yeah let, let me let me ask for a response first of all are you fearful and do you have hatred or is it also just assumed that if you do not like these practices that you're hateful and fearful no i'm not hateful and fearful what is the emotion that you are feeling uh, i'm not against you as you have said the church is rave the way you come uh we're, we're dressed eh? You know what you are you know what you are portraying, the way the society took it. Eh? Mm -hmm. So already you claim the colours and then you come that way on that on the charge. Eh? On the first day maybe you can call you eh, behind uh, maybe talk to you, maybe you can say what you want, we talk now, we, we preach for you, everything. Eh? But after that, let me say uh, continuously, maybe the next Saturday, the next 
uh, session, you are just the same. So what are you trying to say? Okay, because Jem is a pastor and she understands how the structures of the church work, you know, they're very valid points that are being raised because while you're welcoming the queer community into the church, you also don't want to ostracize the very conservative people. But to what point is what we are being asked here? Uh, we, we disagree slightly on what he said. So I would not go to the extent of saying, oh, this is how you should dress. I don't want to see colors. I don't want that borders on legalism and that takes away from what Christianity is. It's not just about a bunch of rules, do's and don'ts. But then I wouldn't expect that you've come one Sunday, you listen to a sermon, oh, now you're transformed, you've changed. Nobody does that. What, what, what is transformation here? Is transformation to, for you to stop being gay? What, what is the outcome, intended outcome? So in the past, we've been hypocritical about this, that it's been more about conforming your behavior to what we think is acceptable. Yet the point of Christianity is to transform people to be more like Christ. And so that means that it's not about just modifying your behavior to make me feel comfortable, to make me feel better. It's about you understanding who you are in God. And so there, there's fruits that comes out of that. So my job is not to come and tell you, you need to be straight to be a Christian. That's not the thing. For sure, not all churches believe this. In fact, we had invited some representatives from a more conservative church, but unfortunately they weren't able to make it. Do you have a comment on that? Oh yes, hi, my name is Alvina Gashugu and I'm an atheist. So personally, I believe the problem started with religion because you're talking about our traditions. What do you know about our traditions? Our ancestors lived in the spirit of Ubuntu. You know, Ubuntu means togetherness. When we ostracize a particular community, are we really living in together togetherness? Is there any love in that? That is just hatred because someone believes different. And just because people are speaking more about it doesn't mean it's happening more. It was happening before. We just didn't have the platform to discuss these things as much. Okay. Homosexuality has always been there, even in the animal kingdom. Who taught them them? All right, uh, Simon, my question to you as a cisgender man, are you talking about this with fellow men? We know that in this country it can become very vitriolic among men's spaces. Well, primarily what I would say is that uh, friction between morality, I love it because that means this uh, which, uh, conversation is shifting. Within, uh, morality is actually changing. You know, it shifts from like one stage to the next. And previously, even I think even way back in the day when our grandparents, there was this thing of like even ladies should not even wear trousers. Now when it comes to morality in that aspect of the uh, It's interesting you keep using the word morality. Is homosexuality a moral issue? Now that's what I wanted to get into. Who defines what's moral within a society? Now that's a, that's the thing now, because literally even when you say now, being honest, let's break it down, being honest even here in Kenya, even when you go, the majority of Kenyans, they define what's moral because their pastor who is the most influential person in, within their society, they say, oh, we look up to you, this is what we define as moral, but... This is what I mean. Do we live by these morals realistically? How many people, how many pastors actually complain? You come to church every single Sunday, but do you live by these principles in which that we speak of right here behind the pulpit? Shout out to my dad who's also a pastor. Now the thing is, <laughs> Hi, dad. <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is, living in, even like when you actually now hold up these moral principles so high and you start saying, we are in, the, this is how you as a society should live. And then now you start, now that what happens is, the people who don't live that way, guess how they feel? All societies am pushed away and they see you as an enemy. And hence, when you immediately, when you start seeing the pastor, even I saw some of you guys start even eyebrowing her, it's like, oh, really? <laughs> and then that, I could see that. And I love the fact that we are having this discussion amongst us. And guess what? Even amongst even us guys, um, a lot, most guys being honest, homophobia is big. I want to lean into that a little bit. Why do you think, first of all, would you, what's your assessment? Is it prevalent or not? I think it's only fair to ask Marilise. Homophobia has always been prevalent. But you see, abuse is based in silence. And that's what queer people cry for all the time. That now we are saying, we are confident enough to say we are here, we've been here since time immemorial, we've been abused, and the church and all systems in place that perpetrate homophobia founded their power to abuse us by making us keep quiet and not say anything. It takes one person to be killed until all of us are killed for it to become something big, right? But it's after you're killed, that's when I'll be killed. So okay. why would I be hating someone or why would I want to believe in a system that then tells you keep quiet when your abuse happen so that we can be cordial about stuff, cordial about what stuff, the Dalai Lamas of the society? Let, let me come back to Gunjiri because I have a question for you. When Edwin Chiloba uh, died, Edwin Chiloba was a fashion designer who also identified as queer and he was murdered in a most brutal way. And when the news came to light on Twitter, 
the level of homophobia was actually scary. Is it too much to ask the government to intervene in those situations and say, yes, we know what the loss is, but surely this is also not acceptable? Yes, of course, I do agree with you that uh, any human being created by God should never die. But the reason why the president would never support you know, such uh, is because, number one, as the president of this country, he makes decision on behalf of uh, everyone. Everyone. Yes. The majority of Kenyans understand and do support the president in that position. However, like we say, it is now turning out to be activism. And so when you think about the role of uh, government in all this, majorly we who are in politics and who are in governance and policy, would rather have no law that either criminalizes or supports LGBTQ. We would rather live the way we used to live those days, where no one talks about you know, these things because the more it is amplified, the more it shifts from uh, now identifying as people who are born that way to a conversation of milking money from you know the west and all that kind yeah. of thing. okay let's let's give the people who have raised their hands a chance Paul. yeah um thank you very much for highlighting the question of donor aid because it's important that we're clear even the kenyan government is reliant on donor aid so every organization that exists and exists as an ngo or an institution that collaborates with other governments you receive funding so there is no gay agenda that's funded by donor funding let's be clear on the second thing i think the question of homophobia is so important for us because again I want to use fear irrational fear and hatred because when we say homophobia we make it seem like it's such a far-fetched idea no people are afraid because we have not been educated enough about what are people fearful of? I, I wish I had the answer to that and I hope somebody answers yeah, that yeah. it's easy it's it's like straight up, even when it comes to guys, it's mostly more, more or less as, as guys. Usually when it comes to homophobia, the first thing that we're like, oh snap, you gay? It's like, so you so you do what? To you to like what happens to you in like the wrong opening? Are like you going inside your bottom? Is that what you try to do? Like that that whole idea, like this can actually happen. Like what are you trying Very to do? Very sexualized. Which is, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then now that's what you have because even now you start thinking that what can this person do to me because you're also a guy and now you're into me at the same time yeah. that was and then but then also homophobia comes from this when you don't understand something fear comes into play Jem yeah. also wanted to give us a clue as to what yeah. else people are fearful of i feel like uh we are judging gojiri for the position that he's taken yet i get what he's trying to 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 speak yeah, about yeah. um when you're the president of the nation um, you can't take subjective, uh, what do you call it, a subjective position on something. You represent other people. And so some of the views he has and what he was talking about in terms of, of advocacy is that um, the majority still have a say. And it's very hard to make somebody change what they feel about you. And a lot of times the religion is vilified. Uh, I don't think religion is responsible for this. It's just human beings in general. Human beings in general are the problem that will always find a way to discriminate against each other. Whether it's, listen, listen, whether it's homophobia, it's sexism, it's racism, human beings are human. So it's very hard to legislate my opinion on something. But when it, com when it comes to religion, and this is where I'm speaking on, like, uh, in terms of the Bible, it gives us a framework to treat people equally, whether we agree with them or not. Okay. Oh, there's some fire flames <laughs> here. Let's hear. I keep Let's on hear. hearing Let's this hear. word morality, mm -hmm. and I keep on asking, who is morality for? Because as far as I'm concerned, you look at a human being, for example, a Christian, right? That is your belief. Why should your belief be my point of action? You love God. Why should I behave in a godly manner? You don't like gays. Why should I like you for not liking gays? We are so bent on saying this thing, umbrella concept of, you know, morality, moral fabric and all that kind of stuff. Where do I buy the meters of the fabric and how can I wear it so that I can look a certain type of way? So this is the thing that I was saying. I think it's important that we educate ourselves because I want to contest the religion and church being the, the barometer of, 
anything yes. because actually Kenya is a secular state yeah, and yes yeah. we have a religious president but Kenya still remains a sovereign secular state yeah. and all of us have the leeway to become whoever we want yeah. to become and practice whichever religion that we want to practice up to including traditional practices yes. that said as LGBTI people nobody wants to get married nobody has asked for same-sex marriage nobody has asked to be affirmed in churches what we are asking for is very plain that there's so much violence in our community and that violence must stop. Yep. So, at the beginning of this debate, we asked a very simple question. Is it possible to coexist without discrimination? Now, you all were giving eyes to Jem when she walked in, and maybe people in Jem's church might give you all eyes when you walk into her church. How do we create more of these spaces within our communities? Let me hear from you. Um, I think it's possible because even before the way we were saying women didn't have voting rights, even like someone brought up saying activism, why are we talking out about these things? Yet when it comes to religion, if we can just see each other on the same level, let me put it that way, because people have a bit of, is it religious superiority? Because when we remember that even at some point whites and blacks couldn't coexist, there's an important reason for activism because it's because of this hatred. So if we can just talk more about it and focus more on what we love about each other as humans, because at the end of the day we are humans, uh, we are born knowing nothing, then all of a sudden some know more or some are more superior, where do those thoughts come from? You okay. know? Yeah. So uh, using activism and leveraging the humanity within yes, the activism. Yes. Some solutions please how do we move forward I think uh, the honesty part is very important queer people are hated because they're sexualized but sex is hard everywhere do you know the number of strip clubs in Nairobi do you know who goes there have you been there and seen people you see people sometimes are like oh my goodness I want to die right now because I can't believe this right but it becomes a problem when queer people are happy to be expressive about it. And it's not expressive that we are shooting pornographic videos and posting. We're not doing none of that. We're just coming out to say, hi, my name is Mary Liz Biubwa. I am a lesbian. I have rights. I have a doctor who assaulted me in 2019. And I've talked about his story on social media many times. He's a gynecologist. I go for a pap smear. He asks me about my sexual life because that's what you answer when you go for anything about your sexual health anyway, right? And I tell him I'm a lesbian and from there on out it was no longer a me, it was a man assaulting me and me having to go through that experience. The end goal is give us our rights. When we feel safe, you will not hear anything about us. All right, I so want to leave. Honesty, okay, we need to wrap this up. We really need to wrap this up. So I only want solutions now, please. I believe that the most important thing is that representation and positive representation is key. Because right now, a lot of Kenyans see gay people as people who don't exist within their society or as something that do not deserve to be talked about. But this image that is sold by the media, the church, and whatever other institution exists is an image of people in the LGBTQ plus community that's not even real. Okay. So positive and honest representation. Some more solutions, please, Paul. My solution is very simple. I think we all exist in a space of curiosity. Rather than invest so much in having bias and judgment and expressing that, can we spend more time being curious? I want people to ask me questions about my life, but not in a sexualized way, in a curiosity way, because I want to bring the question of intersectionality, like you raise it. We as Kenyans are suffering from hunger, from landlessness, from food insecurity from like political corrupt political leaders and all of us are impacted by that the question of lgbti rights in this country has never been a question because there is the penal code that states we are not supposed to exist freely the supreme court has allowed us to associate so that we are able to educate so that we are able to move the conversation away from where we are so i think all of us has a space where we can exist in curiosity. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Gunjiri. This is my point, that nobody should uh, undergo torture or uh, violence. negative violence and all those kind of things because of what they identify as. Mm -hmm. However, we must also be careful as a country to protect the future generation, the people who come after us. We need to have offsprings. We need to have a, a generation. You're opening that, that, a whole new debate. Yeah, 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 so, <laughs> no, I, I mean, that, I mean, it's fine. But you know what? It's okay. I, I appreciate that. That's your viewpoint, and it's very welcome in this debate. Jem, we'd like to finish with words from a pastor. Yeah. Um, so we need to open up our doors. Um, 
I don't have a claim on who who God saves and who doesn't. All right. So if we opened up more spaces for people to talk, you will stop looking at this uh, as at her as a lesbian or a queer. You realize that there's so much more to her. She's a person. She has ambitions. She has needs. She has all these different yeah, things. I like that. So when you come together, then you are able to get away forward because at the end of it i can't i can't force my beliefs on you and i can't force you to and you can't force your beliefs on me but we need to be able to coexist all right so as we conclude mary lee's i asked the question is it possible to coexist without discrimination very quickly yes or no after this conversation yes it is possible okay. that's it's an uphill task though but it is possible I like that. Uh, I'd like to thank all my guests here today because having this conversation in Nairobi is not easy, especially given the political climate. And I want to thank you, our viewers, for staying tuned.